Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. In this episode, I'm going to show you my Simplify 3D settings and some of my latest prints off the Creality CR10 3D printer. So the more I'm using this printer, the more I'm falling in love with it. For the price, I don't think you can actually get anything better. Even if you were to spend up to say $800, I don't think of, I can't name a single printer that would outperform this, this one. Now, I've got a flash sale coupon that's scrolling down below me here. Um, that's for $369.99 USD, and that is only for another couple of days. After that coupon has expired, um, I'll put on a new coupon code in the description and that will bring it to $3.99. Now keep in mind retail on every other site for this is $4.69, something like that. So there's nearly a hundred dollar saving by using our coupon and our affiliate links below. A couple of the prints that I've done lately, uh, we've just been watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as it's just hit cinemas or it's been out for a little while but we just got around to watching it. So the family's big into Groot. So here's a couple of prints that I've done. Um, these ones is, this is Baby Groot. I'll put in some um, close-ups at the end or behind me or somewhere. And this is at 100 micron uh, layer height. And this is in PLA. Now I'm aware you can't see it you know, properly on this camera because of focus, but bear with me I'll put on some close-ups here's the dancing Groot at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 where uh, he's dancing around in the garden pot hopefully you can see that it's even picked up the details here and that's pretty impressive my kids and wife absolutely love these prints now the main purpose of this video was to remind you again that we have got the coupon code there that is only available for I think it was mid-June, so there's not long to go. Then the price will be bumped back up to 460 something. But there will be a coupon, another coupon code there. If this one expires, it will bring it back to 399 or something like that. Now, like I said, the purpose of this video is to go through my Simplify 3D settings. So hopefully, if you've got one of these printers, you can get some really nice um, results, like, like like what I'm getting. So we'll switch over to Simplify 3D. And as you can see here, this is our uh, little baby Groot. It actually came out looking very, very close to that. I apologize if I'm looking down. I'm looking at the same thing you are. <laughs> now, that's the build dimensions of the CR10. You can see that it is not a small printer by any means. Now, if we go through some of my settings, you'll see there isn't a whole lot that I needed to tweak, but the things that I have done have made a significant difference. So these, this is for PLA. I'm just going to show you my PLA and PETG settings at the moment. So the primary extruder, I manually set the nozzle diameter to 0 0.40. The extrusion multiplier, I manually set to 0 0.90. The extrusion width, if you leave it by default, will be 0.48, but I check this and change that to 0.40 to match our nozzle. Now, because the CR10 has a slight Bowden in it, um, we need a bit more retraction. So I've found that 5 millimeters is a really good compromise and you don't get a lot of stringing, so that works well. And retraction speed I've got here set to 30. Under layers, I well, we'll go through some of the settings. Um, generally, I'll print everything at 200 micron to get a best compromise of quality and speed. But this is the last print that I did, which was the Groot, and that was at 100 micron. I like to always do a higher uh, bottom and top count. So I'd like to leave the top count at 5 and bottom layers at 5 and then outside perimeters two should be plenty with a 40 mil nozzle over on the first layer settings this is this is what trips pe a lot of people up first layer height increasing this number is not a good thing you want to decrease this number so if i'm printing at 
uh, 100 microns. First layer height of 80% means it's going to squish the first layer to 80 micron. So that's going to give you better first level um, or first layer bed adhesion. You can go lower. Um, sometimes I go down to 70 or even 50 if I'm printing at a higher um, printing at a higher layer height. I can even bring this down to 50. So for 200 micron. If I drop this to 50, it's going to do the first layer at 100 micron, thus giving me a bit better adhesion. The first layer width, this one I'm still playing with, but I'm finding 150% works well. And always, always on your first layer speed, drop it right back. Um, if you're going too fast on the first layer, it's just, it's just not going to stick. Now this one is up for debate. Um, you can optimize start points for the fastest printing speed or you can use a random but sometimes using random you get zits. Just cutting in here with a quick intermission. I am terribly sorry for the um, out of sync audio that has just propped up at about this part of the video. Friggin XSplit decided to use variable frame rate which screwed with Premiere Pro. So I fixed it now but um, yeah please sit through the video. Uh, just don't look at my mouth talking and it should be fine. I apologize again and um, yeah, this shouldn't happen again. Fur to leave the start point at a set line. So on the back of every print, you might have a faint line, but you won't have any zitting across the print. Now that's personal preference. Uh, additions, I always print with a, um, a skirt. So we do two or three outer perimeters of the part not touching just to make sure that we've got everything level before the primary print starts. If you're using a lot of things that require um, support material like and this guy, um, you'll want to use a raft because the support pillars aren't going to stick very well by themselves because they're printed at a lower infill. So use a raft if you're using a lot of supports. Prime pillar and ooze shield are for dual extrusion, and so we won't be covering that. Infill. Uh, the infill pattern that I use is grid, and the rest of my settings you can see here. Nothing too special out of the ordinary. Uh, obviously generate support material if you need it. Temperatures. For the CR10, I usually use a 60 degree Celsius uh, bed and for PLA we go to 200 uh, for the extruder. Extruder? Extruder? Extruder. First layer, always keep your fan off so you get that plastic nice and molten to adhere to whatever it can on the bed and then layer two onwards or you can even ramp it up slowly so we could change this to 50 at another set point We'll change this one to, I don't know, layer 5. So now it's going to start off at layer 0, layer 1, sorry, at 0, no fan, layer 2, half fan, and then by the time it gets up to layer 5, it's going to go to 100%. Printing speed here for layers below 15 seconds will, um, when you're doing a fine point on the tip of a rocket or something that is a very quick layer it's going to slow down so you don't get the the wobble and the oozing code this window is pretty much standard I might have changed some things but I don't think so the standard build volume again is 300 by 300 by 400 it's a Cartesian robot rectangular style you know this actually put the startup script in the description so you can copy and paste it for yourself this is an awesome startup script because it does a prime line. It avoids your binder clips on the bed. I can't take credit for this one. This came out of the CR10 group. But I'll, um, I'll copy and paste this and pop it in the description so you can use it yourself. Ending script is pretty much standard. We just turn everything off and home the X to get it out of the way. You're printing at about 65, but you can ramp it all the way up to 100 plus. Um, I generally find a lower speed on any printer generally gives you a better result. Settings I'll leave here so you can pause and copy if you would like.
Into the advanced tab, pause the video and check these settings for yourself. I might actually put links to these um, profiles, the FFF profiles on uh, the hotend.org and I'll put a link to those in the description. So if you've got Simplify 3D, you can just import my profiles or these profiles straight away with no issue. So that covers PLA. The other profile that I have here is uh, was provided by another member of the Creality CR10 group on Facebook and this one works awesome for PETG. So you can see uh, I'll put on some overlays of some of the photos of the lamps that I've printed in PETG. Um, I'm not going to go through every setting again, I'll just leave it here so you can pause the video and check for yourself. This is just what works well for me. The rest of the scripts are the same. Uh, also for Pet G, remember you got to print slower because it prints like chewing gum. So uh, you can get away with up to about 45 millisecond on um, on the CR10. Again, this FFF file for Simplify 3D, a link to it will be in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, every single thumbs up and every single share, comment, I read them all. It is greatly appreciated. And we've just, just hit 10,000 subscribers and that's just simply blown me away. I, When I started the channel, I didn't think anyone would watch, but having over half a million views and over 10,000 subscribers, I'm just so humbled and grateful that you uh, enjoy my content and that you want to see more. Um, please remember that these videos aren't possible without our patrons. They fund the equipment that is required to run everything. The software and cameras and everything, I don't need to go through the whole list, is expensive. YouTube revenue itself is near nothing, you know, next to nothing. So, so without our patrons, we wouldn't be here. If you'd like to support us, there's links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am so sorry for the audio sync problems. I believe I've sorted it out now. Have a good one. Thanks. I hope you learned something. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.